stage ones at startup pressures. Minus 15 seconds. And Falcon 9 is going to pick it for flight. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition, lift off. Thirty-five seconds into flight, we've had a great liftoff from Space Launch Complex 40. Falcon 9 powered under the thrust of 1.7 million pounds. We're coming up on throttle bucket, preparing for maximum dynamic pressure. Propulsion reports that we are on target, throttle down, getting ready to pass through Max-Q. Vehicle is supersonic and experiencing maximum dynamic pressure. We're passing through the range where aerodynamic loads are greatest on Dragon Falcon 9. The Merlin engines are now throttling back up. Propulsion reports the first stage systems are nominal. Great views from the cameras here. The blue skies, a nice daylight launch, showing Falcon 9 with Dragon headed downrange. MVAC Call chill. out for MVAC engine chill. That means we are now chilling in the LOX turbo pump on the upper stage engine, getting ready for its ignition about two and a half minutes into flight. Great view looking back from the first stage camera. Cape Canaveral in the background as we head northeast towards the International Space Station orbit. Next major activity is coming up in about 25 seconds. We'll have shutdown of the nine first stage engines. We'll get stage separation and ignition of the second stage to propel Falcon 9 and Dragon into Earth orbit. We also hope to see on the left side the first stage flip around and light three engines and to begin the path of coming back to landing zone one at Cape Canaveral. Nico. Successful stage separation, ignition of the upper stage engine. We've also seen the first stage has done its flip maneuver and the boost back burn has begun. We have lit three engines on the first stage. That's reducing the forward velocity and we'll be bringing it back towards Cape Canaveral. Shutdown of the boost back burn is coming up in about 10 seconds. Second stage continues to look good on power. On the right hand side, you may have seen an object passing the nozzle of the upper stage engine. That's the Dragon nose cap that's generated at this point in flight. We've heard the call out shutdown on the boost back burn. First stage has completed the first of three planned burns that will result in return to landing zone one on Cape Canaveral, just a few miles from where the first stage just lifted off. You can see the grid fins slowly opening. The large titanium fins, we allow them to open slowly. Stage two uh, given the mass the of the fins, we don't want them to open too rapidly. Second stage continues to look good. First stage, good. T plus four minutes into flight. All systems are go. As you just heard from John, we had a beautiful, clear liftoff of the Falcon 9 from uh, Cape Canaveral. And right now, there's two things happening simultaneously. On the left-hand side of your screen, you can see a camera that's on the top of that Falcon 9 first stage, currently pointed down the length of the first stage. You can see the titanium grid fins, uh, and that will be executing its re-entry burn at about T plus 6 minutes and 30 seconds. 
And then on the right-hand side of your screen, you can see the engine nozzle of that Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. Uh, that is currently accelerating the Dragon spacecraft to match orbit with the International Space Station for its eventual berthing maneuvers. It's an interesting semantic point that the process of connecting the Dragon to the space station is called berthing with an E. And that's because it is brought to the space station by the Canada Arm 2 while docking actually refers specifically to two spacecraft that can connect without any external assistance. This stems from old shipping days in which ships would come into the harbor and dock themselves under their own power, while larger ships, which aren't able to easily navigate in harbors, are met by tugboats and then berthed. So for the space station, the robotic Canada Arm 2 is like a tugboat for the Dragon spacecraft. That Dragon spacecraft will make its way to orbit after it separates from the top of the second stage uh, coming up later in the mission. But right now we are focused on both that second stage still accelerating and the first stage coming back down for a landing. Next step up for the first stage is going to be a re-entry burn. That's when it's going to light three of its Merlin engines uh, to slow itself down as it hits the denser regions of the atmosphere. You can actually see on the left hand side of your screen that is Cape Canaveral and the coastline of Florida. Uh, you can see that first stage is oriented towards Cape Canaveral and currently about to decelerate. That re-entry burn will be happening in 30 seconds. In addition to those uh, re-entry burns, you can, oh, you actually saw some, uh, looks, what looked like frozen condensation floating off the, the side of the first stage. Uh, in addition to those burns, the first stage also uses those titanium grid fins to control itself and cold gas thrusters, which are those uh, bursts of, of uh, air you can see periodically issuing from that first stage. Let's watch the re-entry burn happen in about five seconds. Stage one entry burn startup. You can see all three, uh, or all three of the nine of those Merlin engines light up right now, uh, executing that re-entry burn and slowing that first stage down. Stage one entry burn shutdown. And we just heard the call out for an entry burn shutdown. Landing burn will begin. That's the next phase of landing at T plus seven minutes and 35 seconds. We currently have an unbelievable view of Cape Canaveral uh, from the bird's eye view. It is absolutely amazing. I've been at Cape Canaveral for these landings before where you can feel those sonic booms in your chest. It is just so exciting along the Space Coast. Stage one transonic. Stage one landing burn start. Stage two continues along the nominal trajectory. Right now, stage two is currently on a nominal trajectory. This is the primary mission to get that Dragon spacecraft into orbit. Right now, you can see that uh, second stage engine is performing nominally with uh, the Merlin vacuum engine glowing red hot. Uh, you may have heard the SpaceX team cheering in the background. Uh, it appears that the Stage 1 of the Falcon 9 has made a water landing <laughs> off the coast of Cape Canaveral. Still waiting on exact word for what happened there. Uh, just a quick reminder, uh, the primary mission today is to bring the Dragon to the International Space Station. Right now, that mission is going spectacularly. All telemetry from Stage 2 looks nominal. And, and right now, we did have confirmation of a good orbit from that, uh, that second stage with the Dragon. Uh, right now, the next phase of the mission is going to be uh, Dragon separation from the top of the second stage. Uh, we'll be able to see, you can actually see on your right-hand side of your screen, that's a view inside the trunk 
uh, the unpressurized cargo section of the Dragon. And I believe you can actually see some of the science experiments that are in, uh, in the trunk right there. It's an exciting capability for the Dragon trunk to be able to store unpressurized cargo in, and take that up to the International Space Station. It's a very unique capability. And there it is. You can see the successful separation of that Dragon spacecraft from the top of the second stage. Um, the trunk is open to the bottom. Uh, it's an unpressurized spacecraft, and I believe those are the two uh, science experiments we're currently going to be mounted on the outside of the International Space Station. Um, but yeah, so the next uh, Dragon still has a long way to go. Uh, the next phase of its mission is going to be extending the solar arrays. So you can actually see on your screen there's uh, two kind of bumps on the side of that trunk. Uh, those are the folded up solar arrays. And in, uh, I, I believe at 12 minutes and 30 seconds, those solar arrays are going to extend and unfurl so that the Dragon can uh, start harvesting solar power and make its way the rest of the way to the International Space Station. Now, as you mentioned earlier, we've got some cargo inside the trunk of that spacecraft, which you could see as it was pulling away. Uh, we have two different experiments. The first one is the JEDI spacecraft, and that's JEDI with a G. It stands for the Global Ecosystem Dynamics Investigation. Uh, the JEDI spacecraft will actually measure and create 3D maps of Earth's tropical and temperate forests. These measurements will help scientists determine how much carbon is stored in the world's forests. Also inside Dragon's trunk is the Robotic Refueling Mission 3, known as RRM3. It's sort of like Dragon opening its eyes, uh, exposing its sensors to space so it can find and lock onto the station and make its way the rest of the way towards the ISS's orbit. And as you can see right there, that is a uh, confirmation of uh, Dragon's <laughs> solar panels. Uh, de deploying from the side of that trunk. Um, this is excellent news. It means that Dragon is now able to power itself all the way the rest of the way to the space station. Dragon is now on its way to the space station. When Dragon arrives in just a couple of days, the spacecraft and the space station will establish a direct communications link, and then Dragon will slowly approach, pausing at several checkpoints to ensure that everything is still going as expected. Eventually, as Dragon approaches closer and closer, the European Space Agency astronaut Alexander Gerst will reach out and capture the Dragon. Next, ground commands will be sent to Mission Control or from Mission Control in Houston for the space station's robotic arm to reach out, rotate, and install it on the bottom of the space station's Harmony module. Well, 13 and a half minutes since liftoff when that entire rocket was at Cape Canaveral. We had some great views. The weather cooperated today. The ground winds weren't too high. We were able to launch right out the opening of the window. You saw ascent, great stage separation. We did get some great views of the first stage and the grid fins coming back. But as you heard from some of the background noise and comments, the first stage did land in the water. Now the good news is we've got a lot of telemetry from it, so we'll be able to understand what happened and work to improve reliability as we always do here at SpaceX. Second stage went into a great orbit. It was really precise. Dragon you saw separate and now the solar rays coming out. All told, another great day for SpaceX and NASA.